Well, hello, this is Kelly and I am the Mathematic Plumber and welcome to video 5 of the level 2 drainage waste and venting video series. And in today's video, we're going to talk about how to size branch vents using code tables. If you are watching this video, it will be assumed that you have some basic drainage waste and venting knowledge. If you don't, I have a video series on that that you might want to watch first. All plumbing code references will be made from the 2015 National Plumbing Code of Canada. First, we need to define branch vent. Branch vent means a vent pipe that is connected at its lower end to the junction of two or more vent pipes and at its upper end to either a branch vent or to a stack vent, vent stack or vent header, or terminates in open air. Now this definition says many things, but it really doesn't get to the fine nuance of what's going on here, so let me break this down for you. The branch vent is the resulting vent when any two minor vents join together. Now the minor vent is not actually a real thing, it's a classification I like to make just to simplify things. Here is a list of minor vents. If you have not come across all of these, you will throughout your apprenticeship. Now notice how I've put a crown beside branch vent at the top of the minor vents list. That is because it's the highest ranking minor vent. When any minor vent joins together, it becomes a branch vent, including joining two branch vents together. So not only did that definition tell us where the branch vent begins, it tells us where it ends, or the upper portion. A branch vent will end whenever it connects into a stack vent, vent stack, vent header, or open air. Now you may have noticed that the three vents mentioned in our endpoint are not on the minor vents list. This is our major vents, vent header, stack vent, and vent stack. And you will notice I put the crown beside vent header. That is the king of our vents. You'll have to wait till the next video to see what this is all about though. To illustrate this, let's go through a couple pictures here. The first picture is two lab sinks with fixture drains and individual vents. Those are the red vents coming off the top. When the two individual vents join together, it becomes a branch vent. That's the pipe in green. In this next picture, we see those same two individual vents joining together on the right hand side. The branch vent comes across and then it meets up with the dual vent going straight up. Now the pipe that goes straight up from that in green is in fact a branch vent as well. So now let's look at another picture to illustrate how we end a branch vent. So in this particular picture, we have a powder room in the basement with a continuous vent coming up and around, and eventually we join up into another little continuous vent. So two minor vents join together, and now I have a horizontal run of branch vent until it meets up to its end point, which in this case is a stack vent. Now when we talk about sizing a branch vent, the code does not tell us very much. So we have to find the table that's for it, which is table 2583. On the left hand side, we have the total hydraulic load served by the vent pipe and fixture units. Over on the top main body, we have the size of vent pipe in inches. And in the main body, we have maximum length of vent pipe in meters. That maximum length of vent pipe is called develop length. And in order to figure out how we measure develop length, we need to look at a code. Clause 2583 number two. For the purposes of table 2583, the length of a branch vent shall be its developed length from the most distant soil or waste pipe connection to a vent stack, stack vent, vent header, or outside air. So let's look at this diagram to try to explain that clause. First of all, let's start at the highest point, the end point. You were supposed to end at a stack vent, vent stack, vent header, or outside air. What the clause doesn't say is whatever's closest. In this case, our branch vent ends at the stack vent. It doesn't need to go to outside air because that is a stack vent. So I start there. Now I need to work my way to the most distant soil or waste pipe connection, which is a little confusing. So what they mean by most distant soil or waste pipe is a drain pipe. So I need to follow that vent pipe downward until it connects into a drain pipe that's the furthest away from everything. So if I start right here at the stack vent and I work down to this top floor powder room, well, it's a fairly short distance to this soil or waste pipe. But if I continue down into the basement, I encounter another powder room. And this is my most distant soil or waste pipe connection right here. At this point, I need to take out my tape measure and measure the pipe from this point here all the way up until it connects into the stack vent. And I'm going to measure that out in meters because that is what our code book is written in. And for the purposes of this example, I'm going to say that that length of pipe is 10 meters long. So first let's focus on the fixture unit load there. Now we're gonna use table 2493 to figure out fixture unit load. I've been through that multiple times, so I'm not even gonna show it on this video. I have a powder room with a flush tank water closet and a lav sink upstairs and another one downstairs. Flush tank water closet is four fixture units. 
A lav sink is one fixture unit, so both powder rooms will be five fixture units each. That means I have 10 fixture units being served by the branch vent. All right, now let's reference table 2583 and get this sized up. First of all, I have 10 fixture units that I need to serve. If I go down the left-hand side, I will see two fixture units, eight fixture units. Neither of those is good enough, but I can go to 20 fixture units. Now I move over to the right, and under the one and a quarter inch column, I can see that I can go 7.5 meters of developed length with 20 fixture units. Well, that's not quite good enough. So I move over to the inch and a half column and find out that, hey, you can do 15 meters of developed length with 20 fixture units. I think we found our size of our branch vent. Now there is one other table that I need to check because I need to check this for every single vent. That is table 2571. That is the minimum size of vent based on size of trap served. Now the largest trap I'm serving is a water closet, which is three inches. Therefore, the minimum size of vent that I'm allowed to do is one and a half inches. Looks like we're good to go here then. So let's do one more example to reinforce this. We're gonna bring up this picture again. Now let's start on this section of branch vent right here, which is just serving these two live sinks. Therefore, there is two fixture units there. Now we need to establish a developed length. Well, we're gonna say that where this goes outside of the picture goes up to outside air. And we're gonna say that there's nine meters of developed length to the most distant solar waste pipe, which is actually gonna be at this lav connection right here. So I look at table 2583, I come down to two fixture units, and I go across to the right, and I will find out that an inch and a quarter branch vent will serve two fixed units with nine meters of developed length. So we're actually good to go. And now let's wrap this up by sizing up this vertical portion of branch vent right here. Now we're gonna notice this is gonna be a little bit different. I have two more lav sinks joined in, therefore I have four fixed units in total being served by this branch vent. My developed length though is exactly the same because the most distant solar waste pipe is still that far lav sink. Therefore, it's still nine meters of length. So I look at table 2583. I go down on the right-hand side until I get to eight fixture units. I come across to the right and I find out that I can still do nine meters of developed length on inch and a quarter vent. Therefore, I will have an inch and a quarter branch vent. If I check table 2571, it will also concur that when I have one and a quarter inch traps, that I can have a one and a quarter inch vent. And that brings us to the end of this video, but stay tuned for the next video where we talk about vent headers. And that will also be the final video in the level two drainage waste and venting series. Until that point, you have yourself an excellent day.